These masks appear to be the same pattern, but each has a very different scientifically proven effectiveness rate, ranging from 5% to 97% without filters. Can you tell which is which? In my recent quest to find a safe mask that is easy to wear in all seasons and weather conditions, I found liberating scientific fabric research that allows you to determine the effective filtration rate of your mask and which materials to use to make a mask that is lighter and safer. Stay with me as I explain the fabric research results so you can assess your mask, then shop with me so you know where to find the best tested materials. Watch to the end of the video where I will reveal the effectiveness rate of each of these masks, show you why these masks differ so widely, and share my favorite mask pick that is almost twice as safe and half the weight of my usual mask. We will specifically look at the scientific study and results conducted by six researchers from the Pritzker School of Molecular Engineering at the University of Chicago in Chicago, Illinois, and the Center for Nanoscale Materials and Worker Safety and Health Division of the Argonne National Laboratory in Lamont, Illinois. I have linked the research article below, which was published in the American Chemical Society Nano on April 24, 2020. I just want to take a moment to explain the apparatus the researchers used to test the fabrics. All right, as you can see, it starts with an aerosol mixing chamber. Then we have a tube, followed by a collection chamber. In the aerosol mixing chamber, they generated liquid droplets of various sizes to simulate droplets we expel when we talk, sneeze, or cough that contain the virus. They mix that with air and then blew this mixture through the fabric, through the tube, into the collection chamber at a rate of somebody breathing. Once it's collected, they can calculate how much of the aerosol did the fabric remove from the air and thereby determine its effectiveness for use in masks. What I also want to point out is that the researchers drilled holes in the tube at different sizes and they could close them or open them to specifically simulate ill-fitting or gapping masks. So we'll take a look at tight-fitting masks and we'll take a look at gapping masks in a few minutes as well. This chart explains the results of the different types of fabric and I want to point out several things on this chart that are of particular importance. Number one, this explains the flow rate, and I explained before that this is just a breathing rate. So this whole chart explains what it is to breathe through a mask. We have to look at two different sizes of particles or droplets. The researchers broke it down into less than 300 nanometers and more than 300 nanometers. Viruses range from 20 to 400 nanometers, and the average coronavirus, according to Wikipedia, is 125 nanometers, which is in the less than 300 nanometer category. We will spend a few minutes looking carefully at this column so you can understand what materials were tested and how to interpret the results. It is really important to stay with me here so that you can really understand why the mass at the beginning and the end of this video rate as they do. Let's look closely. Number one, they have an N95 filter, which we're all familiar with, I believe, that had no gap. And so do understand that fit is very important, and we'll look at that again, but N95 with no gap versus N95 with a gap. They also looked at a regular surgical mask with and without a gap, and they also looked at some basic cotton uh, materials. In this case, they looked at a cotton quilt, and they specified exactly what that was. Two layers of cotton, this really literally is a quilt. So two layers of cotton with um, cotton batting in between. Quilter's cotton was the next one. This is typically what we're gonna get at say Walmart or most basic fabric shops, Joann's. This quilter's cotton comes in at 80 TPI. TPI stands for threads per inch. And that is a very important number. We'll look at that in a little bit as well. And then they also tested two layers. Flannel. In this case, the flannel that they tested was 65% cotton and 35% polyester. Most flannel that you're gonna find is 100% cotton. So they found cotton, I believe they purchased this at Walmart and it was 35% poly. Then they tested cotton in one and two layers 
and this has a much higher thread count. Remember this is threads per inch and this is 600 threads per inch. When we were back up uh, at the Quilter's Cotton, it was only 80 threads per inch. So this is a much denser fabric and much thicker, much less porous. They tested chiffon and the chiffon they tested was 90% polyester and 10% spandex. And they tested it in one and two layers as well. Then they went into natural silk one, two, and four layers of natural silk. And then we get into these hybrids. This first hybrid combination is one layer of 600 thread count cotton and two layers of chiffon. The second hybrid is one layer of 600 thread count cotton and two layers of silk without a gap and also the same combination with a gap. And the third combination is one layer of 600 thread count cotton and one layer of flannel. Okay, let's take a look again at the N95 and let's look at the results. Uh, this is the results column right in here. We wanna take a look at this column. The N95 without a gap filtered out 85% of the particles and that were smaller than 300 nanometers, which would include the average size coronavirus. So you can see it filtered out 85% of the particles. And then you can see it's plus or minus 15, which basically means that is the possible range. So it could have filtered out as few as 70, 85 minus 15 is 70, and 85 plus 15 is 100. So the real range could be between 70 and 100%. So we would have to consider that, but I just want you to understand what this plus and minus category is. An N95 with a gap, however, so if your mask isn't fitting properly, you're not wearing it properly, you're going to be reduced from an 85% down to 34%, still plus or minus 15. Let me just read this quote from the study. It is important to note that in the realistic situation of masks worn on the face without elastomeric gasket fittings, such as the commonly available cloth and surgical masks, the presence of gaps between the mask and the facial contours will result in leakage, reducing the effectiveness of the masks. It is well recognized that the fit is a critical aspect of a high performance mask. It is critically important that cloth mask designs also take into account the quality of this fit to minimize leakage of air between the mask and the contours of the face while still allowing the exhaled air to be vented effectively. Finally, it is important to note that openings and gaps such as those between the mask edge and the facial contours can degrade the performance. Our findings indicate that leakages around the mask area can degrade efficiencies by about 50% or more, pointing out the importance of fit. So you can see how an ill-fitting mask or a gapping mask is gonna drop your filtration efficiency. Let's look at the surgical mask with no gap and with a gap. So we're 76 to 50. Again, the N95 is better than a surgical mask but a surgical mask with a gap is actually better than an N95 with a gap in this particle range, which I find very interesting, and we can discuss maybe why that is in the comments. The cotton quilt, remember, this is two layers of 120 threads per inch of cotton, plus less than a half of a centimeter of cotton batting with a little bit of polyester in the cotton batting, which may in fact be important. That gets out 96%, and that is a fantastic number, with a plus or minus factor of only two. So your lowest range is probably in the 94% category up to 98%. Let's look at quilter's cotton. Uh, this is going to be typically what you're gonna find at your, again, average fabric shop, so maybe Walmart. Honestly, in my Walmart, and I'll show you that in a minute when we go shopping, I didn't even find 80 threads per inch. If you wear a typical mask with only one layer, you're looking at only filtering out 9% of the particles in the coronavirus size category. If you are doubling your mask, maybe you're using an Olsen mask without a filter, you're looking at 38%, which still is not that great. It is a little better though than a gapping N95. Okay, flannel is at 57%. Cotton, 600 threads per inch, right here, 79 and 82%, whether you use one layer or two layers. 
Now, what I find interesting is let's get into chiffon. Chiffon was not mentioned. We were initially told to use 100% cotton fabrics. Chiffon is not cotton. And in this case, I said they used a 90% polyester and 10% spandex chiffon. There was a 67% filtration rate on only one layer of this very thin fabric and an 83% rate on two layers of chiffon. Let's look at silk. Silk ranged from 54 to 86%, depending if you used one, two, or four layers of silk. This is natural silk from the silkworm. Then they went through and we can take a look at these hybrids. The hybrids really take a, a pretty nice jump. If you use one layer of the high quality cotton, 600 threads per inch, and two layers of chiffon, you're gonna come out with a 97% filtration rate, plus or minus only 2%. So that means it's going to be somewhere between 95 and 99%. If you use cotton and silk, it's a 94%. But that is without a gap. And so here's the clear contrast there. If you use cotton and silk, but your mask gaps, or you're not wearing it correctly, that 94% drops to 37%, which is a huge jump down. It is interesting to note that the gaps in the surgical and cotton silk masks on this table were equal to 1% of the surface area of the mask. So for this Olsen style mask sewn in this way, 1% of the surface area is equal to the size of a penny. That seems like a lot, but when we slice this penny sized paper into smaller wedges, it's easy to see how your mask could easily gap by 1%. These slivers could be around the nose and these could be gaps around the cheeks. So again, reinforcing the importance of a proper fit. Materials are an excellent thing to talk about, but fit is really, really huge. The last one they did, the hybrid combination was a cotton flannel which was quite nice at 95%. This is a really nice illustration that was published by the study. You can see aerosol moving through a mechanical filter, also known as a physical filter, and then through an electrostatic filter. So this is where the hybrids were coming into play. The mechanical filter is usually the cotton, again, a high quality cotton, and that's taking out all the larger particles. And then the electrostatic filter is taking out the very small particles under 300 nanometers. The electrostatic filters would include the flannel, the chiffon, or the natural silk. Let me just read this quote from the study. Electrostatic interactions are commonly observed in various natural and synthetic fabrics. For instance, polyester woven fabrics can retain more static charge compared to natural fibers or cotton due to their lower water adsorption properties. So let's go back and look at this table one more time. Initially, we had looked at the less than 300 nanometer size range because the coronavirus is less than 300 nanometers but the majority of our exhaled droplets are going to be greater than 300 nanometers. I would like to share a quote from a WHO publication entitled Natural Ventilation for Infection Control in Healthcare Settings, which is linked below. Humans can produce respiratory aerosols, droplets, by several means, including breathing, talking, coughing, sneezing, and even singing. Published data have suggested that sneezing may produce as many as 40,000 droplets between a half and 12 micrometers in diameter that may be expelled at speeds up to 100 meters per second, whereas coughing may produce up to 3,000 droplet nuclei, about the same number as talking for five minutes. Despite the variety in size, large droplets comprise most of the total volume of expelled respiratory droplets. So these 40,000 droplets produced by sneezing range in size between 500 and 12,000 nanometers. Therefore, we do need to acknowledge this column, which quantifies filtration efficiencies for particles over 300 nanometers as also quite important in mask efficiency. I will encourage you to pause the video here and compare these two columns. We also want to look at this last column all the way to the right, entitled Pressure Differential. This column quantifies the drop in pressure of the aerosol due to the friction of the fabric. So basically, it tells us how easy a fabric is to breathe through. The lower numbers indicate a more breathable fabric. 
I invite you to comment below any thoughts or observations that you have on this table. Now that we've looked at all the fabrics that have been tested, let's go shopping and specifically look for the chiffon and cottons that were tested. This chart shows the fabrics that were purchased by the researchers and where they purchased many of these fabrics. So here we are in the fabric store. Let's pull some bolts off the rack and we're going to find the label on the end of the cardboard bolt and just take a look and see what this fabric is called. It may be a chiffon, it may be a chemise, it may be a silk, it may be satin. They're going to call it something, but that's not necessarily what the material is made of. You're usually going to see some fiber content. It could be polyester, spandex, nylon, silk. It could be cotton and any combination thereof, including rayon. When we are looking at the end of the bolt, we also want to pay special attention to the washing instructions. Masks need to be washed regularly, and so you do not want something that says dry clean only. I want something that I can wash either by hand or in the machine in regular detergent. Once we take a look at what the material is made of and we are satisfied with that, you want to look at how high the thread count is or what the quality of the fabric is looking like. Most of the cotton in this store is going to be between 60 and 80 threads per inch. None of the bolts in this particular fabric store have any thread count on them. So we're going to go home and take a look at our chosen fabrics and actually put them under the scope and see how many threads by good old fashioned counting uh, they are in each inch. And these are Waverly fabrics that we found at our local Walmart. As you can see, Walmart fabrics actually do list a thread count, which I was really happy to see. What I was a little disappointed in is how low that thread count was. The number next to the thread count, the GSM, is grams per square meter. So that number tells you relatively how heavy or how light a square meter of fabric would be. We headed over to Kohl's to take a look at their sheet selection. Usually sheets are going to be the best value in the most fabric in those really nice, thick, high quality cotton thread counts. We found 525, 900, 1,000, and even 1,200 threads per inch. We found exactly 600 thread count sheets at Walmart. Amazon also has 600 thread count sheets, and I will post links to those products in the description below. We went into Joann's looking for this chiffon. My usual thought when I hear the word chiffon is a very, very fine, silky, see-through, drapey fabric. I did not find that chiffon at Joann's with the content that the researchers purchased, which is again, 90% polyester, 10% spandex. After searching through Joann's, both in the store and online, the only fiber content that I could find that matched that description was this stretch chiffon. It's much thicker, much more opaque, a slight bit stretchy, but not very much, and has a slightly fuzzy feel to it. So now that we're home with our fabric selection, what I wanted to demonstrate was under magnifying glasses, how to count the threads literally by hand. I am not gonna count an entire inch because I don't wanna to count to 60 or 80, but I will count a quarter inch, and that'll give us a much better idea of how dense this fabric is. So as you can see in this picture, I counted the quarter inch and I come out with about 19 threads in a quarter inch. So we'll multiply that times four and we'll get about 76 threads per inch. That is in the range of the low quality quilters cotton. Let's get back to the masks that I showed you at the beginning of the video. These are all sewn variations of the hospital approved Olsen mask pattern, which I have linked below but one rates at 5% and another far better than an N95. If you listened through the video, you will now understand why each mask rates as it does when I show you the differences between them. Mask one. This mask is made with only one layer of 80 thread count cotton. According to the research, it ranks at a 9% filtration rating if worn without gaps. But this mask gaps on my face, about the size of a penny or more. So the study assumes that we can cut that rating in half. 
Therefore, we will generously give this mask a 5% effective filtration rating. Mask 2. This mask is the standard Olsen pattern made with two layers of 80 thread count cotton. It is worn with a nose wire and has almost no gaps. The study would rate this as 38% effective. According to the original Unity Point Health Olsen mask tutorial, if I wear this mask with body tape around the mouthpiece and add a quality filter to this pocket, I could increase its effectiveness substantially. Mask 3 is made with one layer of 9010 stretch chiffon worn with a wire and properly fitted to the wearer's face. It doesn't gap. The study would give this a 67% rating. Mask 4 is constructed with two layers of 9010 stretch chiffon, which is also worn properly fitted, giving us an 83% rating. Mask 5 rates better than an N95. It is the same Olsen style mask as all the others, but it is made with a layer of 600 thread count cotton and two layers of 9010 stretch chiffon. When properly fitted, this mask ranks at a tremendous 97% filtration rate. Whether you decide to purchase a mask or make a mask, you must have the right fabric and an excellent fit in order to make sure the mask is effective. After a lot of reading, research, shopping, and patterning, I finally found a mask I can be comfortable in while still protecting those I love. Balancing high performance safety with lightweight breathability, my top pick goes to the single layer 9010 stretch chiffon as my safe and solid all season mask choice. With this new mask, I have nearly doubled my mask efficiency rating while reducing the weight by half. The moisture wicking fabric feels lighter and easier to breathe through and is comfortable to wear. The fabric moves in and out when I breathe, but I quickly got used to that. With these new materials and my modified Olsen pattern and construction techniques, this single pattern fits everyone in my family. Armed with this information, I hope you too will be able to create a mask that is comfortable and safe. Please like, subscribe, share your thoughts on this subject in the comments below, and share with others so we can add this scientific research to the worldwide mask conversation. Thank you so much for your participation and support. Look for my video tutorial on how to make this new safer and lighter all season top pick mask and how to incorporate this safer and lighter stretch chiffon and high quality cotton materials into other mask patterns. Click the subscription notification bell, check out my YouTube community page, and visit my blog at gailcolmar101.wordpress.com.